Hello there everyone and welcome back. I had a good handful of matches in my last episode. The only downside of course is most of them weren't even relevant for the YouTube series because most of them just involved my opponent warping out on me and not really engaging me. So either my reputation precedes me or no one wants to fight Eldar. I think it's really the latter in all honesty because who really fights Eldar more often than not because hell. I say it enough times already so I sound like a bit of a broken record but it seems like I never fight Eldar so if I don't have the experience to know how to play him against him properly then I'm sure as hell know that everyone else probably doesn't. So not really much else I could say on that and I was really excited to see how that planetary assault mission would have worked or played out with Kalamar because it wasn't it wasn't nearly as bad as it looks for the space station assault that much I could say, but a lot of that was due to having more space to maneuver, whereas conveniently, if that had dragged out I would have been wedged into a corner rapidly, really damn quickly, so I could have still suffered heavy losses even if that was a win, just because I couldn't really maneuver very well, so it's Hard to say how that would have worked out, but one thing I know for certain is I want I want to keep this thing alive, the Foy Stalker when I field it, well really all my ships, when I'm dealing with Slanesh. If there's like only one or two of them, which I think is what I'll normally encounter against m most Chaos fleets, then I should be okay to win the rest of the match, here's hoping. I would think anyway, but when they can chain them like that, I can't even remember what the cooldown is for the Slanesh's ability to cancel out all my... It was it just basically negates all my abilities and weapons, mind you? I forget what. I think it's just Siren's Call or something. I forget. Either way, this is becoming a bit of a ramble, but I am kind of itching to face off against Slanesh a little bit more, because I can kind of bait out the Slanesh every now and then. I already spoken about how I think the Auroras are actually pretty good at negating that just by their sheer mobility alone. They are really damn fragile, so if I play it wrong. These things will die immediately. I think that much is certain just with a little bit of ramming, never mind the bombers and potential macro cans I may have to deal with. So let's carry on. Alright, so we're going to be face off against a brand, potentially a brand new Tau fleet, Tau player, so you know this might end up heartbreaking, but I'm going to continue to indulge him as usual there. I need to get used to micromanaging these frigates especially and it never hurts to manage multiple fleets at once because the more refined I can get managing all the different control groups the better it will be for me in the long term. So I'm not opposed to doing this here although I can't quite remember how far along my ships are as far as leveling because I would like to throw on whichever one is closest to level 10. I think it's actually the, the Strider of Ashuran I believe. Maybe that was the one I already had selected, but I feel like this may be the one closest. I can't quite remember though, but either way, this is as pretty much as light as I can get. And he's going to have a lot of points, so this is still not going to be an easy fight for me regardless. So I'm willing to humor him and I'm willing to put in some serious effort here. I'm, I'm going to try to withhold using my old way uh, Maelstrom if I can help it. But I'm going to... This is the... This is the plan anyway. I'm going to try and have these in three separate groups and just micromanage them to the best of my ability. And ideally, have them all hit the same target, which obviously would be the main goal, or at least the best way to try and play this is to have the focus firing. So we'll see what happens here. At least my pulsars are going to be really potent at dealing with the frigates. It might be a little bit tricky if I'm attacking from their flank. If they're coming straight at me or for whatever reason flying directly away from me, then even the Aurora is going to have an easy time hitting them there. It's when I'm on their side that might be problematic. And hell, I think even the Hellborn torpedoes, they would have to get really close for them to effectively hit a frigate it looks like. Whereas the Aurora, I believe, yeah, the Aurora has a much tighter arc for its two middle torpedoes at least, so... I'm not sure about the third and fourth one on the far side, the left and right, if that's the same kind of whiff as the Hellborn. It doesn't look like it, if I were to be honest, but... Let's try and keep this refinement going. The more first I am in micromanaging multiple groups there, like I said, the better it is for me. And in all honesty, despite how my Tau opponent in the last episode, where I was just bombing him basically to death, even though he didn't really do a whole lot, it was still good practice for me regardless. Being able to dance the fleet in there, it was just a little bit awkward when I actually had them all together. I couldn't for a life of me tell which f ship was from with, was basically in, in which group, so... 
if there was an easy way to tell that, that would be helpful, which is kind of why I have an easy time remembering them when they're spread out, because group 3 is almost always the one on the right side, the right flank. Group 2 would be on the one on the left flank, and of course the main front runners are group 1. But once they're grouped up in a clump, that's when things get chaotic for me, and I'm going to have to re-evaluate my control groups, I think, to help keep things simplified. But, let's show him what we have here. I'm just curious to see if he's going to take these torpedoes as seriously as if everyone else seems to be lacking. And also, let's avoid the mines if I can help it. I do have extended sensors for my Hellborn, so spying them isn't before I get impulsor ranges. Not going to be an issue. I'll be able to prioritize relatively well. And of course, my AI is going to target a little bit better when I set them on their attack runs, so... That's all good there. Do I saw it run, though? Hmm. I might as well hang on to the salt run until the Seeker missiles start coming. Because you never know when a reload might be handy. He could have recon probes to stick onto me, too. But what does this fleet composition tell me? Not really a whole lot, in all honesty. Because he can very easily get, like, four or five ships there if he went with, like, a... A Bor Connor Dale of there. They're like 170 points, and he could easily get like a saucy with that. So I want to say maybe he has like three. Well, I was gonna say he was gonna have three light cruisers, maybe, but that's probably not the case in this regard. But let's see what happens here. He did fire seeker missiles. That's all good there. And I would have liked to maybe kill the shields, but a single pulsar probably. Not going to be likely. Ooh, and he got a hull breach there, so that kind of stinks in that regard, but... Let's try and get some hits in. Yeah, that one's dead, so get this out. Took a little bit of hull damage, but that's what the salt run is kind of for, remember. Oh, he has a castell too, so... Now let's go for the bigger prey. Be mindful of the Seeker missiles, mind you, but... Shouldn't be an issue just yet, and oh, pulsars are not up. So, gotta be careful of this here. Oh, and I was hoping to boost that out in time, but I guess not. That was a big mistake. And the boring could end up badly for me as well, but I haven't repaired and negate anything. And he didn't even get a critical hit of some kind, so that's fine. So, Salt Run is currently active. We have torpedoes that make his day. Now. Now let's get going, get dodging. Oh, I thought they both had their boosters up, so that's not true. Yes, yeah, it's the dang Spirit Stones messing that up there, it looks like, because it was just two, three seconds off. So I nearly killed my own frigate from my own misplay, but... He better get that out quickly if he, if he knows what's good for him, because I don't even need to do damage. Although he is repairing from, with repair drones, so... Let's try... Can we kill off the warning? Because it is kind of getting repaired right now. Because he kind of lost his uh, cruiser just to the Maelstrom itself. So, kill this thing immediately. And damn, I took a lot of railgun fire there. Firing head on against the town railguns is no joke, so this thing's going to burn to death. Well, actually it has repairs going on, so it's probably mostly negated. Is he going to warp out though? Ah, uh, heavily damaged, but it might still survive. I did. Oh, the the extra damage is what did. So let's get ready to hit this thing. And we dodge. Oh, damn it! Damn you, your mutiny. But once that, once we destroy, let's see which weapons destroy. Just a single pulsar, so that's going to be a pain. So I'm going to have to get super aggressive in this case. Hit him with torpedoes and hell. If it wants to make this easy for me, fine. Yes. Although, I may have attacked a little bit too prematurely there. Because I didn't ha quite have my abilities up. And I know my salt run's not quite available, alas, even though it was telling me that. So, this could still end badly. I should have waited a little bit more for the attack. Yeah, and that was bad too. I was hoping my Pulsar would have fired there, but... And there's no way I can evade these some. I need my torpedoes to get the killing blow, and it's not gonna happen. Damn it! I got a little too aggressive, I think. 
And this is not going to survive anyway, just because of the sheer amount of Seeker Missiles. Oh well. Yeah, too aggressive there. I need to be a little more decisive killing the cruisers, I believe. Even though I was doing fine killing the frigates because he left them isolated. And then my Hellborn. I guess I... Tr mm, I should have seriously waited till torpedoes come up. Because what, eight torpedoes with the pulsars? Would, all at once would have killed those, uh... Sauces immediately. Well, he had a Dale of two, let's be fair. Well, actually, it was a Borkon. I take that back. A Borkon and a Sauce. So, that, today was his lucky day, I guess. He managed to kill a single cruiser there. And the Hellborn were pretty pitiful, I guess, as far as my control, I suppose. Well, there is always that chance of luck to attack for, for his railguns to hit me in all honesty, but I seriously should have waited until torpedoes came up. Played a little more passive, I guess. Because I know I have enough damage potential with the Hellborn and the torpedoes to just kill those things we've seen before. So that may have been my problem, just trying to get an aggressive too often. And, actually, that wasn't the one that was close to level 10, so the Follower of Ghosts is what I want. Ah, well, that's a shame. Alright, 700 point Orc. There's always that risk of him having the upgrade that will ignore my Hollow Field, but... We'll see how this goes, because, in all seriousness, the Orcs are going to be sort of the hardest to kill because of the extra raw health points they have on the armor, but also the easiest because of how slow and their lack of high energy turns for dodging the torpedoes, but... I have been a little bit spoiled for adversaries that are actually taking my torpedoes seriously, mind you, so it's really hard to say how much big of a factor that is with their lack of mobility. But now, do I go with the Void Stalker? Durability is kind of what I want there in case he is taking that hollow field, or what is it, that sap can to deny my hollow field. Do I want a shadow as well, though? Probably not. He may have a lot of fighters though, and, but if he goes really heavy fighters and torpedo type setup, then really my pulsars are what's going to carry me, not my torpedoes. So long as I'm good about my control, I don't want to get too close, but at the same time, well, I probably want to be around 6,000 units or something slightly closer than that to help ensure my torpedoes hit. Because he's not going to be able to turn out of the way, he'll have to resort to boost if he wants to do that. And I gotta be mindful of micro warp jumps too, so... Sadly, I don't have the Void Stalker as an easy way to negate that, but I still need to be watching my warp jump cooldown to really know for a fact when that's going to be available so I can optimize that. Because I shouldn't need to jam him normally, I would think, but if I jam, yeah, if I hold off on the jamming there, Sonic Run's not, not going to be very effective because I imagine he's going to have extensive sensors, if not like a lot of beacons, due to how much more cheaper the Orc Cruisers are. All in all, so he's gonna have a, he's gonna at least have access to more beacons than everyone else. So solid running is probably not gonna be very practical after the initial engagement. We'll have to wait and see though. Now, let's try not to get too super aggressive. Well, if he's lacking fighters and torpedoes, I just wait for him to come off cooldown. And ideally, if I can murder one of those things incredibly quickly, that will set me off on a good, on the right foot there. I think to start getting a really good momentum swing. But, he's got six ships there, doesn't necessarily mean they're all cruisers, he could probably very easily have two light cruisers in this mix. It still remains to be seen if he's a lower admiral level than me, so he could be gaining bonus points too, let's keep in mind. So there's a lot of uncertain factors here, and let's see, oops, let's, did I, yes, yeah, okay, I, for some reason I thought I had group three over here, and it was true, for a moment, half a second I thought, maybe. I had the hotkeys all wrong. He does have a single cru ship of some kind with torpedoes, which is going to be interesting. It is a cruiser, mind you, not like a light cruiser or a battleship, so... He must have a bit of a mismatch there, because I would have figured he'd be shooting more torpedoes if he had more of them, so... This probably tells me mega cans, which means we keep our distance. Let's not try to go to super aggressive route, so... As a preemptive measure, let's switch to 6,000 unit range, just to be safe. My hollow fields don't matter so much if he can't actually shoot me. Although it is going to feel weird. I'm going to feel a bit naked if I'm going to be relying on standing still at 6,000 unit range. So I don't know if how effective it's going to be ultimately. But we got ships there to hit. He's left them isolated. So these are probably his two frigates in all honesty. But we'll find out in a moment. We will know soon enough there. 
I am assuming they are frigates. Well, he did circle them around the celestial body, so that's part of the reason why this is going well for me. And I don't quite have the extended sensors, but at the end of the day, I don't need the extended sensors. I just need to slow down his other ships here while I do his attack run. And also, we'll get Group 3 to go a little bit better position. Now, we're almost in torpedo range. Now, let's see what these ships actually are. So, light cruiser. Lots of fires. And there's the power torpedoes for you right there. Holy crap. That emphasizes my point perfectly. Although, mind you, that's 800 health. Light cruiser, but it's still 800 health that we just murdered in like 10 seconds. So, it's a damn promising start. Now, if only I can be solid about doing that more often, I could probably crush any fleet in a hurry. Yeah, aside for maybe like Space Marines or that who have the mobility to just conveniently just dodge out of the way. So, we're gonna have to move out of the way for these torpedoes, but I'm fine with that. We got a nice flank run available, and that tells us, oh, he has a tractor can too, which we haven't been seeing very much use of. Which I'm okay with. Now, let's get this going. And, and get on out. Uh, get on out there. He is gonna boost. He's, well, that was convenient. It's gonna be a little bit awkward, but we have group 2 going over this way. Group 3 is with the Hellborn, so let's keep that in mind too. So this thing's gonna die in a hurry. Now, how do I want to finish it off is a big question. I think it goes without saying. The Eclipses kind of do that. They have the firepower for it. As well as the Star Cans, and they're also shooting well. They're not quite shooting at the rear, but damn close. Just got to keep an eye on the other ships, though. And we're hitting its rear. Okay, Micro Warp Jump. So I failed to pay attention to that, mind you. So that's the, kind of the big thing I could have learned from this. Was to watch the damn uh, cooldown timers for the Warp Jump. To at least get an idea of when his uh, mic warp jump was going to be up. So I failed. No matter what, this is probably a failure just because of that. But he did dodge the torpedoes, but we have more pulsar shots available. Or at least a pulsar shot available. We'll see if it's enough damage, though. Nope. Sadly not enough, but we have another maelstrom. Get on moving, get on dodging. That thing should be dead just because of the Maelstrom. And how are we looking on Maelstrom count so far? I think we burnt three of them, did we? Nope. We have three available, is what I'm learning here, so. And we only destroyed two cruisers, so. We are evading them. We are assault running, so now is a practical use for assault, the assault running due to his lack of beacons, and that wasn't what I wanted. So get that fixed up quickly as we try and attack the rear of these ships. Now can I get out quickly? Yep, I can. It's going to be a really awkward placement for me, but okay. He is turning around. That's kind of what I could hope for. He burnt the stasis bomb. My eclipses are perfectly safe. And we can disengage freely. It's a big benefit here. Now. Let's turn off the salt run and get ready to do a nice flank here. He does have a level 1 cruiser, so I guess he's still maybe Admiral level 7, possibly. But since he can't see the eclipses, he's not going to see where they're going. He could possibly hear for him. I don't know if he's that aware of the, that mechanic yet. But we could go in there and start punishing these ships. I don't want a torpedo just yet, but he is getting ready to attack, so let's try and do... To just that, shall we? Alright, so he is coming in now. Now, Eclipses. Let's get you in to start contributing. Stop picking on the poor uh, Hellborn, damn it. It's like the worst target there for you. But I'm kind of okay with it at the same time, so... Let's try and get in there, start doing damage. We did well murdering these things quickly, but we still need to do more damage. And unfortunately, I don't think this ship's going to survive very long. Now, boost on out. Get on out. Get going. Hellborn. Maybe you can get one more torpedo in. We'll see. Nah, not anymore. And it did dodge most of the torpedoes too, so... Get moving. Get dodging. Eclipses are, well, they're no longer hitting, but they are going to dodge at least my, tor my own torpedoes. 
So this is going really well as far as like how it started, but now maybe a little more questionable. I'm not really comfortable trying to commit because he does have the long range cannons and he is recharging his boosters. So let's keep that in mind too. And I don't think that actually helped me very much, but do I have torpedoes? No, I don't. But I could keep moving, I could keep boosting. This one should be dead without a doubt. Just I need a couple more shots to seal deal. The fire results a good way to do that, if nothing else, but I want to make sure it dies. Okay, it's dead. I think that much is safe to say now. Let's stasis bomb these other two. Get them out of the way. Now, while he's preoccupied, let's do another strike. I gotta keep in mind I burnt all my false maneuvers, so any aggressive play here might be fatal if I let him get his boost off without really taking it seriously. Those torpedoes are gonna hurt. Yeah, my eclipse is kind of in the way, so let's get that fixed too. And that did a lot of damage. That is incredible damage there. I am really happy with that attack run. We are playing a bit of a safer pa route, mind you, but maybe we can finish this off. I am vulnerable to the cannons, so we're lots of guns, so let's be mindful of that. That should be dead though, so that that's gonna suck a little bit with that tractor cam, but thankfully my 6,000 unit pre-engagement range is, or engagement range, what is it, the auto, what do they call this exactly? I think it's the just engagement range, but that worked that well, because if I kept flying closer, I would have easily gotten ran with the combination of the tractor can, so. All in all, that was pretty good, I want to say. It felt good, it seemed a little bit weird, not having a hollow feel, I won't lie. It's because those those cans, those lots of guns could be a threat because they can always get a lucky critical hit because only my Auroras actually have the belt armor, don't they? I could be wrong in that regard. Oh, uh, I'm probably wrong actually. It's the Void Stalker that doesn't have the belt armor. And maybe the Eclipse is there, but I think I gave them that as their level 6. I'm going to have to double check and see because I'm honestly not sure now. It's a little bit of a weird match, but... As I said at the very beginning, it's a lot easier to hit the orcs with torpedoes at a distance. I was just thankful he didn't have sap cannons. At least the ones that ignore my hollow field. Because if that drags on too long, I'm basically on a clock. So I need to kill off his ships and do a hard engage. Which means just staying out of range of his weaponry until I either get repairs up or my core cooldown abilities are back up. Which I technically could do. Unless he's relentlessly boosting after me, mind you. But I like that. Let's see. Did I have belt armor? No, I didn't actually. So there was always that random chance I could suffer some key critical damage from the guns until I can fix that problem. So really, it's just the Auroras and my Shadows that have that upgrade. So that could have been a problem. The deck could have been an issue because he completely ignored the Eclipses once they saw it run. But if I had lost the deck in that exchange, it probably was a sitting duck since I was wedged in a bit of the corner there. And I still could have flew in the asteroid belt there, because if I use a fault, what is it, my rate bone shift to quickly boost through there, the actual damage I would have took from the asteroid would have been very minor, as opposed to just manually flying through. It still would have been, what, 50, maybe 100 points of hull damage if I was so unlucky, but that was still an option, and it actually would have thrown him off as far as, like, a, a guessing game there. But it's still a question if he could, could have, it's still a question if he could have paid attention or listen for the audio cues. I wonder if he could have gotten a possible read of where I would be going with those eclipses because that was a very serious possibility there and one I would love to explore more personally so I can actually know because I said way back when I started playing with Elder again Void Blending may not be as good as it could be because he can still listen for me and that's something I really want to experience firsthand more if possible. Alright, looks like we have another town matchup here, this time 700 points, so Custodian is a serious concern there, so I think it's almost demanded. I take the Void Stalker just to help counter and negate its effectiveness, ideally. That's the main purpose of the Void Stalker here, because if the Auroras can go on the Protectors or the Saucers completely unhindered, with little risk of being blown up immediately by a Custodian Bomber Wave, then that's pretty good for me. But it's even better if I could somehow jump on that damn custodian and not be foiled yet again by the damn micro warp jump. So let's try 
and actually work on that. I may have to actually actively be work looking at the cooldown there, which may be a little bit distracting for me, I won't lie, since it is something that I'm kind of neglecting to do. Partially due to the microphone is obscuring the bottom right of my vision a little bit, so it is a bit distracting and hard to kind of focus a bit when I do that, but it isn't intruding on my actual key card on the bottom right like it has been before because my microphone's been all sorts of different places as far as positioning in front of me for hopefully getting good consistent audio there without threatening to eat the mic and god knows what else but at least I can see it down here before before when I had at one point my microphone was completely obscuring my cooldowns and actual abilities there for a brief little period so that got it irritating quickly needless to say but we are possibly dealing with a custodian. We see at least six ships. This is almost a giveaway, considering the fact that he has to feel... Ah, uh, we know what this is. Custodian Stronghold. Custodian Goddamn Stronghold. I can tell almost by the count there, but it's possible it could be something else. And he's got, he's got hit and ship, so let's try and listen for him. If that actually works, as I believe. Okay, I hear humming over on the left. I think I heard humming honey on the left there. It was very subtle, mind you, because I think my ambient sound is a little more quieter than it was before. Yep, I hear him right in the corner there. I may be... I'll deliberately boost it a little bit, but I'm sure you can probably hear the humming as well. There is something over there. I don't know if it's the custodian, mind you, and my aurora is kind of in a bad spot there as far as spotting. My level 10 aurora, that is. Oh, and that was a bad mistake there. I didn't want my... I didn't quite want... Where is it? Okay. I didn't want my voice talker to kind of uh, go silent running. That's a bit of a waste of cooldown. And never mind the fact that it doesn't actually help me. Because my fighters are giving way, away my position regardless. But at the very least... Actually, let's, let's, give him a, let's give him a nice message here. Let's tell him we know where he's at. Especially since he kind of gave it away for me a little bit. Probably not the smartest idea, but I want to see how this works. It might be too narrow a clump. And also, while I am trying to listen for something else on the right there, it's possible his frigates and his stronghold may still be hidden there, but I am curious to see how this plays out. Does he really have all the ships over there? If he has point defense, especially extended range on his point defense, I might know. Okay, so he does have the 7,500 unit range there, so that is kind of why I would like to have the upgrades here, but we know where he's at. At least where one of his ships is at, so. And I wasn't paying attention to the actual railgun count, if that was like a custodian or not. But, we do have ships. We have torpedoes. No, I, w I didn't want... I want these things to go over there. Thank you. Please do that. And we do have like a protector of some kind. Oh god, my auto... My pulsars messed up horribly there. I want them to shoot the wardens and then they start turning around. Probably because of the hotkey mess up I just did. Oh well. Let's keep on moving. He does have the 7,500 unit range, but... We can fix this problem. There goes all of his bombers. Wasted an instant. He's still burning a lot of his timer, mind you, but... Was that the custodian? Were these two protectors? It's hard to really say, if I were to be honest. It looks like at least two protectors. Come on, burn all your timers there. One of the warrants took a lot of damage, at least, so there is that. Oh, it is a level 2 fleet. A really low level fleet, so this is going to be anticlimactic incredibly quickly. I am sorry, fella. This is going to be brutal. And this is not going to be pretty, but it pay it worked out. I took a ridiculous amount of railgun fire with that said, even though I was kind of on their flank, where technically tower weakest, but that still felt pretty damn promising. Now I think I can afford solid running. Ooh, did I even miss the void stalker? That would have been the best case situation there. But let's try and fire some torpedoes. Let's get more torpedoes up in this, and. I am being revealed because of this dang Warren here. I kind of may have over forgotten about that some. And he's trying to fire at my Void Stalker, but it's not working very well, is it now? Now, kill this thing off. 
Uh, I don't think I can anymore because I have no actual other weaponry. Oh, wait, I actually do. I have the most important type of weaponry, and it wasn't the boring I had in mind. I was going to maelstrom the damn thing. But let's go in there, jam everything. Hopefully that actually is helping me a good a bit. So, is he warping out? I thought I heard something warping out. I could be wrong. Okay, he is warping out. Oh, well, I'll let him live. Because I don't think I could kill him very quickly anyway, especially since I'm already disengaging. And the frigate died for me. So it's a tad bit underwhelming. But there is something really important to learn there. We knew where he was at before he even revealed the beacon, so... I think that's a very big win. I just hope his ship can get out in time before it gets destroyed by the Maelstrom. That would have been... That would not be the way you want to go. Take pointers, folks. Because if Eldar are doing Sonic Run plays like that, you can abuse that too. Order now to your nearest YouTube channel named Oathmaster, I guess. And this is the first time in God knows how long I even said my own call sign. But that does work. Apparently, it was really hard to say how many ships were actually there, mind you. Because it sounds like it was a low hum for me. And I apologize maybe if you didn't actually hear it, because I will try and boost it in the editing so you know what exactly I was experiencing to make that call. Because that is what I was referring to so much when I was talking about the goddamn, was it void blending and salt run tactics, if it's actually practical or not. Especially when your entire fleet is hidden, mind you. Which is kind of why part of my strategy with to help negate the foil blending tactics to keep permanently visible, almost permanently invisible, and be able to hit them at awkward angles is I use the voice stalker to kind of just d dilute the sound to drown it out a little bit because it is a bigger ship. He is going to be constantly seeing this because ideally that match wasn't a good example. I don't want to silent run with this because of course the fighters are always revealing me regardless. So that is something that I can really abuse and is part of the reason why I think I do really want to change this out, but no one seems to be using it against me, or at least not obviously.